Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's July the 4th and we're looking at Psalm 23 and 24 today. Um, psalm 23 is of course a very famous psalm, probably one of the most famous psalms in the Bible. And what I want to bring to your attention today is the way in which the psalm is made up. He begins, it's a psalm of David, he begins, um, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, the f in this psalm we have three valleys. The first valley is the valley of his provision. This is the valley where the shepherd provides everything for the sheep. What does he provide? Well, he provides everything. In fact, David says, because the Lord is my shepherd, I will not be in want of anything. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, so he provides food for me. Um, sheep only ever lie down when they're fully satisfied. So he says, the, the, the Lord provides all of the sustenance that I need. Um, and he leadeth me beside still waters. Now, these are not dangerous waters. Sheep very often can be in danger from rushing rivers. He says, but he leads me beside still waters and he restores my soul and he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so um, the imagery of the shepherd and the sheep um, um, is right through this initial valley. He restores me. You see, within the sheep, there is the tendency to stray. And so he says he restores my soul and he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake now in this particular valley there is um, in this particular valley there is the leading of the shepherd uh, the shepherd goes before and the sheep follow him they are the followers and where does he lead well the Lord leads me in paths of righteousness now righteousness is is doing that which is right in the eyes of the Lord and he says and the Lord leads me into paths of doing right under the old covenant and he does it for his name's sake you see it is to the name of the Lord and it is to the credit of the Lord and to the glory of the Lord that David walks in paths of righteousness now the second valley is found in verse 4 and he says though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil so here we have David he's in a different kind of valley this is not the green pastures and the still waters anymore this is the valley of the shadow of death you see death is stalking him and the shadow of the of the of the stalker falls across his path he said but even in the valley where the shadow of death is there I won't fear, fear evil because thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me now the rod was an instrument of discipline the staff was an instrument to guide he says and the disciplining hand of God and the guiding hand of God they give me the protection that I need in the valley of the shadow of death now he says I'm not walking in the valley of the shadow of death at the moment at the moment I'm in the in the valley of green pastures but if I did walk through the valley of the shadow of death then I will fear no evil why for thou art with me. So in the first valley, he says, I shall not want. Okay. And in the second valley, he says, I will fear no evil. 
Now we have a third valley which begins at verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So this is a valley. This is a valley where the um, this is a valley where the two armies meet. This is a valley where those that were on David's side meet those that are on the enemy's side. And in the midst of his enemy, okay, he has a table prepared. There is the, the pavilion, you see. The pavilion is the place where two opposing forces meet. And in that valley, he says, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Now the anointing of his head with oil is the confirmation of his calling. He has been called by the Lord and he has been anointed king by the Lord. But this anointing, it takes place in the presence of his enemies. You see, whatever David's enemies might say or think, um, when the Lord anoints his head with oil, then his enemies have to stand there and watch the confirmation of God upon David's life. And he says, my cup runneth over. You see, David's cup, it is the cup is the place where the, where the wine is put. And wine is symbolic of joy. He says, in the presence of mine enemies, not only does God prepare a table for me, not only does he anoint my head with oil, but my joy, it just runs over. Okay? And he says, and you know what? He says, surely, definitely, God's goodness and his mercy, they will follow me all the days of my life and even after I'm dead one day I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever now that's my password for today the very last phrase he says I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever there's going to come a time when David will live again there's going to come a time when David will be raised from the dead in the full vigour of his youth. He will stand upon the earth and he will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now the next psalm, Psalm 24, we've called it the King of Glory. <clears throat> now I take it that Psalm 24 is a messianic psalm. It's speaking about the Lord Jesus. This is prophecy and uh, <clears throat> it's describing a time which we would call the millennium. It's describing a time when the Lord Jesus will reign in all his glory. Um, let's read what it says. It says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Now, at this moment in time, we see yet not all things Put under him but there will come a future day when the Lord Jesus will take personal possession of the whole world and in that day the glory of the Lord will fill the whole earth from sea to sea and so this psalm is describing what will happen in that kingdom he says in that kingdom the earth will be the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. And who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? You see, there's going to be a new temple, the millennial temple. And who's going to be Who's going to be invited? Who's going to be worthy to ascend uh, into the hill of the Lord? And who is going to stand in his holy place? And then he answers. <clears throat> David answers his own question. He says, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness 
from the God of his salvation. So what he's describing here is the qualities and the characteristics and the qualifications of those that will be invited to stand in Christ's presence. And those that stand in Christ's presence, they'll have to have clean hands. They'll have to have a mind that is pure. They will have to be people that have not lifted up this soul to vanity. There'll be no pride there. And they will be truthfulness in their heart. They will never have sworn deceitfully. And they shall receive the blessing of the Lord. In Matthew chapter 5, he begins, Blessed are the pure Sorry, he begins, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see God. And that's exactly what's being described here. He's saying one day we will be called up to Zion. We will ascend the hill of the Lord and we will stand in his holy place. To do what? To meet the Lord Jesus. To see God. To meet him. He says this is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. And then he says to the city, he speaks to the city, he says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be you lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, <clears throat> strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. And who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And so it's describing this triumphal entry of the Lord Jesus into Jerusalem, into, into the city, the eternal city, and he's going to come in. And the question is, who is righteous? Who is able? Who is worthy to enter the everlasting city? Well, it's the Lord of hosts. The Lord strong and mighty in battle. So I'm looking forward to the time when the, when the, the doors of the city are thrown open to the Lord Jesus. And he comes into the city in all his regal majesty to sit upon the throne of his father David and from there he will judge the nations and he will bring peace and equity to all the world. What a glorious prospect this is. Well there we are, there's two psalms today, beautiful aren't they? And uh, look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, bye for now.